What's up, guys? This is the Mysterious Taco Algorithm. I'm back with episode four of my Last of Us playthrough. Uh, you'll remember in the last episode that Joel and Tess met up with Ellen Page. And by that I mean Ashley Johnson. But Ellen Page is actually the package uh, that Tess and Joel will be required to deliver uh, outside the city. So we've rejoined them and we are currently... Um, making our way towards the Capitol building where we are supposed to meet up with the Fireflies, who are kind of the resistance movement, if you will, uh, in this game series. Who's waiting for us at the drop-off? She said there's some Fireflies that have traveled all the way from another city. The girl must be important. What is the deal with you? You some big wig's daughter or something? Something like that. How long is this all gonna take? If everything goes as planned, we should get you to them in a few hours. Ellie, once we get out there, I need you to follow. I uh, will say this about the next section. Of course. Uh, very definitely supposed to be probably stealth through because er, this early on in the game. You don't really have a whole lot of weapons. In fact, all I've got is the pistol that Joel started with. And this is actually right. your first introduction to armored opponents. That is, uh, enemies that are wearing body armor and helmets. Uh, which basically doubles the amount of damage that they can take. Um, enemies wearing helmets can take two headshots instead of just one. Uh, with the only exception being some of the cooler weapons you get later in the game that are armor piercing. Uh, I know I've mentioned it before, but uh, I've sucked at stealth games since stealth games were around to suck at. Uh, probably since the first Metal Gear game on the NES. It is definitely not, not one of my strong suits. Uh, not making excuses, but just kind of trying to give you a heads up as to probably what you're about to see. Uh, so, if you're expecting solid snake level gameplay, uh, this is not it. Don't do anything stupid. Move. Turn around, on your knees. You scan him, I'll call it in. Put your hands on your head. This is Ramirez at Sector 12, requesting pickup for three stragglers. Understood. Look the other way. It'll make this worth your while. Shut up. Tired of shit. Mm-hmm. What's the ETA? Couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Or something. Oh, shit. Look. Jesus Christ. Marlene set us up. Why the hell are we smuggling an infected girl? I'm not infected. No? I'm just lying. I can explain. You better explain fast. Look at this. I don't care how you got infected. It's three weeks old. No, everyone turns within two days, so you stop bullshitting. It's three weeks. I swear. Why would she set you up? Hey, bye. Of course, the big reveal there is that Ellen Page has already been bitten uh, by a zombie. 
Uh, so therefore she should be infected, but she's not. Uh, she's actually immune, and that is actually why she's so important, and that's why we've been tasked with smuggling her out of the city. Uh, of course, there is a army of people uh, whose job it is to prevent us from sneaking out. Uh, so we are kind of cutting through this area, trying to avoid the spotlights and the enemy patrols. Uh, very Metal Gear solid. Be another sprint. And, uh, we'll see how we do. I personally, I am not optimistic. And when the player is not optimistic, uh, the viewer probably shouldn't be optimistic either. They must have gotten through. Check the trenches. Just stay back. You don't see anything down there. Are we sure they came this way? Okay, looks like we're gonna huddle up. Stay down, don't let him see you. Come on, kid. Follow Joel. See if we can't sneak underneath this guy. You see anything? Clear back here. Have a look up ahead. So far, so good. Okay. <laughs> Looks like somebody got a hand on us, so uh, we're not. Well, we're exactly, we're exactly as sneaky as I thought we'd be. I hear him up ahead. All right, you can see there that guy actually took two headshots to take down. Uh, that is because he is wearing a helmet. Uh, now the headshot indicator, the hit marker, uh, doesn't change. There you go. There's another example. Uh, when they're wearing a helmet, but uh, if you do shoot them in the body, the hit marker will change uh, to a few dots to kind of help you know uh, that you just hit someone wearing body armor. And like I said before, it basically doubles the amount of hits that the enemy can take. We can get through here. Now that being said, there are a pair of guns later on in the game, I won't go ahead and ruin for you yet, uh, that can receive armor-piercing upgrades, and that can... Uh, very much help out, especially in game against armored opponents. Uh, and I will say this, just kind of a little little tease here. Uh, not all of the armored opponents you fight in this game are human. Uh, there is one type of zombie that is armored as well. It's too many tests. That reminds me, uh, be prepared to open a lot of empty cabinets and drawers. Uh, especially the higher you go in difficulty, uh, the less items you'll find. Still got to check. Let's see if we can't choke this guy out. Eh, of course not. We've been spotted. We'll say this, this early on in the game, fighting a ton of armored opponents with just the pistol, uh, is very difficult. There we go. Very limited supplies, especially this early. Uh, enemies are smart, they will try to flank you. See, as you can see, I just hit him in the body, uh, and I got the different hit markers showing that he is wearing armor. Uh, I'm also very low on bullets at this point. Uh, down to four, and I'm getting shot from just about every direction. So we're going to go ahead and try to book it on out of here. 
I firmly believe that running away is a respectable strategy uh, and sometimes a necessary strategy. So we're going to see if we make it. Alright, I think we actually made it through that section. Of course, that section can be done stealthily. It just didn't happen this time. Or any time when I've played, actually. Uh, and I, I'm sure a s s perfect stealth playthrough, uh, that probably would have gone a lot, lot better. I think we can squeeze the rear. Fuck. Charlie Squad, report. Shit, shit. I got more soldiers. Sir, break off pursuit. Report back to Let's around. see if we can avoid repeating that accident. One thing that I, I do really like about this scene is it's dark, uh, and that is a kind of a recurring theme in the game too, is sort of the day-night cycle. Uh, you will see the daytime, daytime events, evening events, sunset, uh, and as you can tell here also, it's actually raining. This just kind of goes to show you the attention to detail that they actually put into the game, which I really enjoy. It's like we've got some more parts for weapon upgrades. I'm gonna go ahead and craft another shiv. I got a feeling we might need that. Shivs, of course, are crafted from blades and tape. Tess, up through here through this pipe. I think we can make it through here. Stay very close, Sully. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait. Jesus. Gather up. Call it a fact. We're returning to the wall. You heard the man. Roll it up. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. They're gone. Look, what was the plan? Let's say that we deliver you to the Fireflies. What then? Marlene, she said that they have their own little quarantine zone. With doctors, they're still trying to find a cure. Yeah, we've heard that before, huh, Tess? And the... Whatever happened to me is the key to finding a vaccine. Oh, Jesus. It's what she said. Oh, I'm sure she did. Hey, fuck you, man. I didn't ask for this. Me neither. Tess, what the hell are we doing here? What if it's true? I can't... What if, Joel? I mean, we've come this far. Let's just finish it. Do I need to remind you what is out there? I get it. This way. If we cut through downtown, we can hit the Capitol building by sunrise. We hope. All right, so we have successfully escaped the soldiers. We're going to continue kind of picking our way through the wreckage, uh, looking for a way to get to the Capitol building. One thing I do like about this game is that the the way forward, the way to progress the story, isn't always immediately apparent, which forces you to explore a little bit. 
but if you really truly are too stuck to move on uh, Naughty Dog has implemented a system uh, where it will pop up in the lower left hand corner of the screen and prompt you to press L3 and it'll actually give you a little bit of a hint does not look like we're going to be able to go that way That is the yeah, Capitol building on the horizon. This is the downtown area? It was. Now it's a giant wasteland. Over here. All right, so we are going to take a shortcut through this half-collapsed office building. I'm sure nothing will go wrong, and there, there is another empty drawer. It's been ripped apart. Body's pretty fresh. Is that bad? Yeah, it might be. Let's not stick around. Some more weapon parts. Uh, actually, of course, to use the weapon parts, you need to find a bench, a tool bench, and or a workbench, I should say. Shit. Some more ammo. Uh, upgrading weapons actually uses a combination of the workbench and tools. Uh, there are different levels of tools, one through five. And each of the different weapon upgrades requires a certain level of tools uh, as well as a certain number of parts. Uh, the better the upgrade, the higher the requirement, of course. Uh, Joel is going to shove that unfortunate soul out of the way. Sort of. Using sound. Like that? Like that. If you hear one clicking, you got to hide. That's how they spot you. That uh, little guy laying outside the door there is actually the first clicker you encounter in the game. There's some supplements. We'll talk a little bit more about those later. Uh, but for now, back to clickers. Uh, clickers are, I'd say, a couple levels up from runners in terms of difficulty. Uh, they are a little bit different. They work a little bit differently than most of the rest of the enemies in the game. Uh, in that they have no eyes. Uh, they are effectively blind, but uh, they actually make this clicking noise, which supposedly allows them to, to kind of navigate, sort of like bats. Uh, which means one can actually be facing you, and generally speaking, as long as you're not... I mean... <laughs> As long as you're not moving and forcing open doors, ouch, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, you still don't want to let them get too close to you. you all right? Uh, they're also extremely erratic uh, in terms of their movement. They kind of flail around and kind of wiggle, so it's difficult to get uh, get headshots on them. And uh, their weird kind of fungal growth on their head. Here. It's not something I ever thought I would say in a YouTube video. Uh, their fungal growth on their head uh, sort of acts like armor. It actually normally takes about two shots to the head to take one down, especially with a pistol. As you can see, I did just get the ability to craft med kits finally. Uh, med kits are cloth and rubbing alcohol. So when you're out looting for supplies and you see that, you know what they're for. This is actually the first shiv door I've encountered. Uh, it costs a shiv to get in, but it is usually worth it, especially if you can just craft another one right off the bat. Uh, usually contain a fair amount of ammo, crafting supplies, and weapon parts, and supplements. Um, if you've got the shivs to spare, which on higher difficulties you may not, uh, they are definitely worth it, and I would recommend it. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, boy. 
Just see if there's a way through. It's clear. Come on, Ellie. All right, kid, you're up. Come on. You got it. Okay. Come on, big guy. Let's go. This is actually our first introduction to live clickers. Uh, they are extremely unpleasant. Uh, not only do they detect by sound, uh, but if you're unlucky enough to have one get close to you, you can't really effectively melee them. And if they grab you, it's not as simple as just pressing square to get away. Uh, you actually have to have a shiv in your inventory in order to stab them. And it is actually the same with taking them down. You have to use a shiv to do it. Uh, they do have their weaknesses, though, being that they are very sound-oriented. Uh, they will converge on a thrown bottle like nobody's business, uh, which is what we're going to try to do to distract them. Let's grab another one just in case, but I think we're good. Being that clickers are prone to pounce on any any breaking glass uh, that they hear in the general vicinity, they are extremely vulnerable to Molotov cocktails, uh, which of course you don't get until later, but when you do, uh, and when we do actually in the walkthrough, I fully intend to show you my strategy for dealing with large groups of clickers. Uh, I think you'll like it, and it really does come in handy probably be within I believe the next episode or two depending on on how we go It looks like we've actually just found our second weapon in the game, a revolver. Uh, of course, it carries less ammunition than the semi-automatic pistol we picked up at the very beginning, uh, but it does seem more powerful. Uh, the semi-auto from the beginning usually takes about three, three body shots, I would say to take down a regular human enemy, whereas the revolver seems to only take two. Uh, I will say this though, the rate of fire is pretty awful compared to the semi-auto, uh, although you can upgrade that later. Just picked up a metal pipe, uh, which you'll notice from the dots underneath it next to my health bar is far more durable than the 2x4 we used a couple episodes ago. Let's choke out this runner. There's a few enemies down here. Uh, there is one clicker down here that I'm aware of. Uh, so we are going to try, emphasis on try, to kind of stealth around and take them out. Uh, for my part, I'm going to go ahead and cut the commentary here. Probably go ahead and call that an episode. Uh, but until next time, this is Taco Algorithm signing off.
All right, come on down. I'm impressed, Joel. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> 